education experiences to empower them to make decisions and enrich their lives in the future they create. So you guys should be getting back on the website and getting back onto Google Classroom right now because we're going to continue where we left off yesterday. I think it's going great so far. I mean, um, I started off the year telling the kids that we're trying something new and that it would be a little rocky in some places at first. Mm -hmm. um, but the benefits have definitely been greater than any of the drawbacks so far. So it's been really good. Um, I think the, the giving the students incentives to want to learn and then opportunities to learn is the right way to structure my class, right? What I've, what I've learned over the years is that the students want to learn. The idea this year was to change the classroom around so that the students were a little bit more self-paced and self-directed in the classroom and rely on that internal integrity that they do have to, to learn the material, but let the students work a little bit more at their own pace. So instead of the whole classroom doing the same thing on the same day all the time, right. um, I really focused on differentiating my classroom, even within a pre-AP classroom. We're going to talk about Raymond's Run. Raymond's Run is a story about an African-American girl who loves to run, but she's got a problem and you guys are gonna to try to figure out what it is as a group. I was in the gym, I was a PE teacher and a coach for a long time, so this is my fifth, sixth year in a classroom. So I'm still always learning new techniques, new ways, but I always felt that, you know, if you make it fun for them, make it, you know, I was used to sitting down in the classroom when I was in school, and times have changed. Kids need to be up and at them, moving around. Their whole purpose of coming to school yeah, there's math, reading, history, and science. There are core subjects, but their whole main focus here is to learn how to think to solve problems. We're, these jobs for them are not even existing right now. You know, they, their jobs are not even existing at this moment, but if they can think and they can learn how to solve problems, work together, they're gonna have to learn how to collaborate. There's no job, okay, very few, but there's no jobs where you just work alone. Correct. So what you're going to do when you get your group of poems, the three of you are going to work together to figure out what the poem is about. Well, for one thing, I firmly believe in cooperative learning, so that wasn't new for me. Um, I've done cooperative learning since I started teaching, which is about two years ago. Uh, what was new was the new learning objectives and demonstrations of learning. Okay. And an X is a sign of the time. That is so cool. I try and find different ways to provide the lessons, so I, I try and watch each kid, uh, my students, to make sure that they're not only learning, but they're having a good time while they're doing it. And I try and let them learn in a way that they like to learn. So like I have some kids that really like to learn by themselves. Mm -hmm. So in, in some classes, I let them work alone mm -hmm. most of the time. And when it's important, I put them into the groups so that they work with the groups. Um, I also try and find ways to keep the classroom fun.